All right, and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about GPT-4 and ChatGPT plugins and what that means. So is GPT-4 basically the birth of a new next generation app store? And will OpenAI have a monopoly on the types of plugins that are going to be added into their marketplace, just like Apple kind of became a monopoly in what apps that they allow into their ecosystem? And will they take a large fee from that? Is it going to be a race to the bottom? We're going to unpack more of that, answering all these questions and more in this full video. So for those of you who don't know, OpenAI released the GPT-4 data set. So they were running the GPT-3.5 recently, but now they've updated that and GPT-4 is available to the chat GPT plus users and also some users of the API. So basically what chat GPT's new GPT-4 allows for is image inputs text inputs and then also emitting text outputs. You also can use the Whisper API to be able to do voice translations and also language translations. It's a really powerful translation tool. So I highly recommend going to openai.com forward slash research and check out the GPT-4 information to learn a little bit more about it. So AI is here and AI is here to stay. So let's go ahead and talk about the plugins feature. So chat GPT just released the ChatGPT plugins. So they've in, uh, implemented initial support for plugins in ChatGPT, and they are designed specifically for language models with safety as a core principle and help ChatGPT access up-to-date information, run computations, or use third-party services. So OpenAI has released just a handful of the plugins to test out. So there's a few of them that you can look at and uh, more coming in the future, but they only want to release a few of them at a time because they want to see and test as they're released instead of releasing a whole bunch all at one time. They did open up the plugin development to a number of well-known companies. So you have Expedia here, you have Instacart, Kayak, you've got Wolfram and Zapier, just to name a few, but there's a lot of people developing the plugins for ChatGPT right now. So it's an opportunity to be really innovative, but also it could be an opportunity for some of these companies that you might consider monopoly to take over the space. One of the biggest things with plugins is it allows you to have direct access to the internet. So for those of you testing out ChatGPT, you might have realized, oh, it only had data up to 2021. Well, now with plugins and one of the newest plugins that OpenAI has released, which is the web browser, I'll get into that in just a minute. This is the link to it to open it up. They uh, allow internet results to come into play. Now Bing also had that uh, capability. Bard has that from Google right now, but this is the plugin that allows for internet access. So you really can have, with the internet access, the ability to search for current information, provide sources for verification, and also basically have a built-in browser to compete with like Google search engine. Uh, you're getting real results using the ChatGPT interface. So OpenAI has a really great ChatGPT browsing plugin demo that you can check out here. So it actually shows you how it's browsing the web, it's giving results, and it's also giving the links to the source. So yeah, really powerful here. Now again, Bing has this capability, but yeah, it's pretty powerful to have this plugin doing that now. So you can also see how it's outputting that and uh, giving you through the d direct results that you're looking for based on these prompts. Now they've also released, uh, again, web browsers, one of their other plugins, but uh, Code Interpreter is their other. So the Code Interpreter essentially allows you to have a sandbox code execution environment in ChatGPT, so you can see the potential of what it can do helping out with software. So the code interpreter is a Python interpreter in a sandbox firewalled execution environment. So in this case, it gives a prompt that, to do some math and you're getting a code prompt, uh, code interpretation of what that would look like for the answer. So it's performing this logical calculation here using code. So here's a great example of the video showing what the code interpreter can do, plotting this function on a graph, giving data set information. So you can upload photos, you can ask it to make it 
four times smaller in this case in the example that they're showing here. So this is still only alpha access. So to get plugin access, you will need to join the waitlist. I'll link to that in the video description down below and they will roll out more access to everyone here in the near future. One of the things I'm most excited about with the ChatGPT plugins update is this is what's called retrieval. So what retrieval allows for is any company, any organization can upload personal company data and it can be searchable by GPT-4. So you can actually allow users to obtain relevant document snippets from any data source. So any of your files, any notes, any emails, documentation, all you need to do is ask questions and ChatGPT can reference that data now using the retrieval plugin. You can choose a vector database for indexing and searching the documents, which is really cool. So with the third-party plugins on the uh, blog page here, when they're talking about ChatGPT plugins, they're talking about like how to build one, and the steps that are required to build one. You can look at the third-party plugin demos that they have here, which is really cool because anyone can build any kind of plugin here, which is very exciting. So any business now or um, whether you have a product or a service, if there's a plugin capability or a ability to add value through a plugin, now you can do that in the ChatGPT plugin marketplace. One of the most exciting things for me looking at ChatGPT plugins and what they're developing is that there is a very likely possibility of creating a universal backend database for any business, any organization that ChatGPT can now pull from. Now, it's important to have all of that information you put in a very secure place, but just think of a tool that you can now use to prompt access to any information. Think about like access to your Dropbox folders or files or your Google Drive folder or files. Now you have a AI tool that can reference all of that in search and find everything that you need right on the fly. Now, as we know, AI, like in the movies, has the potential to take over the world. And even Elon Musk has become pretty famous and well-known for talking about some of the scary things associated with AI. He's actively working on building his own AI application. So there's a lot of concern and security talking about AI, but in my opinion, AI is a tool just like anything else. And one of the best ways to, uh, if you are concerned about the situation happening with AI, is to get involved and build things, build solutions, build projects, just like what OpenAI is doing with the ChatGPT plugins. I, for one, am not a fan of monopolies so if you want to build something get out there and build it and if you're not happy with what OpenAI is doing get out there and build a solution that you want to build right now we are in one of the most amazing times of innovation that the world has ever seen with what's happening with web3 technologies and AI technologies so the best time is to get in right now and there you have it this has been a video talking about the chat GPT plugins release and a little bit of the GPT GPT-4. So if you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe to the channel and remember to turn on the notification bell and hit that subscribe button. It only takes five seconds. 94% of people watching my content on my channel are not subscribed. What's going on? Just do it. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, that way you can support me creating more amazing content just like this. And, uh, you know, again, if you're, ex if you're interested in looking at what AI can do for your business, go ahead and drop some questions down in the comment section. I've done a number of videos where people have commented on my videos and I've done a full walkthrough on how their business can use ChatGPT and AI solutions to grow and do more marketing. There's a lot that I've done on my channel, so you can go ahead and check out some of my links in the video description. And with that, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to keep it uh, moving forward and I will catch you next time.